So I know I'm a couple of minutes early. <laughs> I hope everyone is having a fabulous uh, day, evening. Hola. Um, Kaiju K. Hey, oh. <laughs> okay, so yes, Jeanette Waverly. I figured out how to put the settings where subscribers can only comment. Hopefully that helps with like weird comments and people trolling the chat. My husband also is going to try to moderate, but he's super not good at that. So we'll hope for the best. Okay, so today, well, actually, I'll wait a couple of minutes to jump right into it. I'm going to go ahead and start preheating my, my um, electric skillet. And for those of you that are going to cook with me, um, you know, if you're, by the way, welcome to my live stream, Cooking Live. And my name's Angelica. And I had a subscriber in the last video uh, that said, um, you know, I should call this like my cooking show from the tabletop. So I think I'm going to stick with that. Thank you, subscriber. And if you're in the chat, shout out to you for giving me that inspiration because I was thinking table side, but tabletop makes sense. So welcome to my cooking show live from the tabletop and my electric skillet. And, um, for those of you that are wondering, um, for those of you that are wondering, uh, I wanted to do this, you know, show, cooking show series. I don't know how long I'm going to do this, uh, but I wanted to kind of showcase easy things that you can make if you're cooking for one. A lot of us uh, just cook for ourselves. I have a lot of subscribers that are in college or they live out of motel rooms or dorm rooms and some of you just don't have access to a kitchen. So this is just giving you ways to cook um, if you don't have access to a kitchen. So I'm gonna let the chat go for a little bit. Um, hi, Christina. By the way, I'm gonna give a couple shout outs to family members uh, today. My niece had Special Olympics Day at her high school. So I wanna give Avi, hi Avi, if you're watching, Thea loves you, congratulations. You did so good in your race today. Okay, and I also wanna give a shout out to my little cousin. I love you, Meiji. If you're watching Major, I say hello. Um, so yes, we are going to cook LA style uh, street dogs. And this is preheating. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I'm working with. Um, and I know we're kind of early, but I, you know, I, I know in the playback, I had a commenter say that they really wanted, um, when I do the live streams to just kind of jump into it uh, too much time in the beginning when I'm kind of like chatting or just giving shout outs, it, it, you know, in the playback, it just doesn't work. So there's that. Okay. So for those of you that are cooking along, oops, this is getting hot. I don't want to burn. Um, for those of you that are cooking along, you'll want to wrap your bacon around the beef hot dog. I'm using beef. Use whatever you have. And I have two. So we're going to do, you know, cooking and dinner. For those of you that haven't eaten and are going to cook on your tabletop or in your electric skillet, you know, do that. Okay, so did I turn this off? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start cooking. Let's see, can you see that? Yeah. Also, and we're going to chat, don't worry, because I had the funniest thing happen to me at the grocery store today. Okay, I'm also going to be working with one jalapeno. It's kind of like I'm going to make a jalapeno torreado, like just a grilled sauteed jalapeno. I'll put that in. That's going in. And this is one mini bell pepper yellow, one mini red bell pepper that I just sliced and half of a small onion. I'm actually gonna let the bacon cook a little bit and render some fat before I add the peppers, but I do wanna get some charring on the jalapeno. So if you're cooking with me, um, you're more than welcome to cook with me. I kind of posted that um, earlier today. Uh, and I hope for those of you that aren't cooking and you're just joining the, the live stream, uh, stick around, grab a snack, grab a drink, by the way, my drink, 
My drink today is going to be um, Agua de Jamaica. This is a hibiscus flower, like a uh, Mexican style fresh water drink. I boiled a quart of water with one cinnamon stick. I let it boil for five, seven minutes. And then um, I shut off the heat and I added a quarter cup of dried hibiscus flower petals. And that's what turns it red. And then I just let it steep. I added sugar to taste, poured it over ice. It's so refreshing. It's another refreshing drink that you can make during the summer. Okay, so now I can turn this back on so it doesn't burn. But I am going to cook these hot dogs all the way around. You want the bacon to cook completely. I find that working with thin cut bacon works best. Um, but if you're kind of entertaining people, then you definitely can, um, you know, use thick cut. Okay, so while that's cooking, by the way, can you hear me okay, everyone? I'm gonna wait for someone to kind of catch up in the chat and say if they can hear me. Um, let's see. Okay, let the R said yes. So I'm assuming you can hear me. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Miss L. Okay, so I needed hot dog buns for the live stream today. I'm gonna I'm gonna share a story or I'll, I'm gonna share something that actually happened to me. So today at the grocery store, I went into the grocery store because I have everything for the live today except for hot dog buns. So I walk in the grocery store and I'm I have the habit of like just still looking at things I definitely don't need, but I'm like, oh, I might need that in the future. So um, so anyways, I'm making my way to the hot dog buns. And this elderly gentleman uh, literally just like got in front of me and he goes, hey, how are you? And I'm like, uh, and I'm nice. Even if a stranger comes up to me, I'm nice. <laughs> so I just went like, oh, well, hello. Uh, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. I was just kind of being silly because it caught me off guard. And he goes, so how have you been? And again, I'm racking my brain. I'm trying to be very respectful. He has to be like my, you know, at least 70, 80. So I was being very polite and I thought maybe he was lost or he needed help. So I went, oh, I'm fine. And I go, and how are you? And uh, by the way, you'll want to turn these. Um, anyways, and I said, well, how are you? I just kind of went with it, went with the flow. And he goes, well, uh, I know it's been years since I've seen you, but it's funny meeting you here. I don't think you lived around here. And then I started thinking, like, does he know me from social media? But again, I don't go around going, oh, people know me. I don't, I don't do that. But I just didn't understand this interaction with, a, you know, this complete stranger. And then he stares at me, and I think he realized, I don't think I really know her, because I, I made it very clear, like, I'm sorry, um, have we met before? Or, and he goes, you know what? Is your name Cheryl? And I go, no, sir, it's not. And he goes, you know what? You're not Cheryl. And I go, uh, okay. He goes, yeah, her teeth, she wasn't a smiley. She wasn't very toothy. And now that I think about it, she had a lot of gray hair. So I guess he realized he didn't know me. So that was a strange interaction. And I go, and I kind of chuckled and I said, oh, okay. I said, okay, well have a good day. Uh, I don't know. I got to go get these hot dog buns for the live later. And before I was able to walk away, he goes, you know what? Uh, I just want to warn you. Uh, he goes, you shouldn't be so nice to strangers because sometimes they could be kind of weird. Literally, when he said that, I just looked at him. And I was like, you are correct. And, and I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> I was like, uh, Grandpa, you are correct because you are proving this, this point in real time. So I just went, you know what? You're right, sir. You have a good day. And I walked off very strange. And then he called me Toothy. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I could have not had that happen. So anyway, I went to the grocery store. I got the hot dog buns. Um, and I also, I also want to bring up how many of you are excited for the eclipse? I mean, am I super excited? I think it's cool. But some people are literally traveling from all over the world. Um, to, you know, watch the eclipse, the solar eclipse that will be April 8th, by the way. Um, so I was looking for eclipse glasses. Um, <laughs> somebody, public disclosure, I can hear the flavor. Uh, let me tell you, 
bacon in a pan frying like hello my favorite my favorite smell so if you are cooking with me you'll want to just make sure see how it's getting brown you want to keep cooking I know the angle's kind of weird but hopefully you can see like stuff here we'll put like that Enrique Garza, I don't know. I don't think he had Alzheimer's. I will say this. He was very friendly, but it was just, I was minding my own business. <laughs> Oops. Okay, I'm going to cover this so I don't have to yell and let that do its thing for a little bit. So, um, the Eclipse, the Eclipse, I wrote down some notes, by the way, because I wanted to have structure to what I talk about. But the uh, solar eclipse that's happening on April 8th, are any of you going to uh, watch it? Um, I managed to get two pairs of uh, like the eclipse sunglasses that they sold at my grocery store. Uh, hopefully they actually work and don't burn my retinas. <laughs> but, um, so apparently for those of you that aren't familiar with solar eclipses, I looked up some, some interesting information. So. Growing up, I remember, um, you know, the old wives tale or the superstition that, you know, uh, if you're pregnant, don't watch a solar eclipse. Um, that was like a huge thing. Um, but I want to share some information. So the path of a, the path of totality of the solar eclipse, which is where the moon passes in front of the sun, like completely blocks the sun. The path of totality is about 150 miles wide and 2,500 miles like long, like it stretches from Texas to Maine. And um, I know, um, I don't know if I saw it on the local news or my mom probably told me because my mom always calls me and says, hey, did you watch the news? But apparently there's gonna be an influx of like international travelers. So these eclipse chasers from all over the world are trying to fly to the US um, to be able to stay or watch uh, within the path of totality, like to get a better view. And if you are in different parts of the US, like in different time zones, zones outside of the uh, path of totality, you can, you can still see it. But for example, I'm in the Houston area. So from what I'm going to be able to see, I won't be able to see the complete, like the moon completely blocking out the sun because where I'm at, it, they're still going to be part of the sun exposed. But if you're in that path that stretches from like, um, I think people in San Antonio, Austin, Dallas, like they'll be able to see the, the path of totality. They'll be in, in range to see the moon completely like block the sun. And the eclipse, I think what makes this eclipse special from what I read is that it's been several decades uh, or no, it's, this is going to be one of the longest, like, lasting eclipses. I want to say it's going to last somewhere between four to seven minutes. Like, it's going to be, like, a, a, a double the time, like, last longer. Um, but here are some things you don't want to do in a solar eclipse. Um, I remember in elementary school, there was, uh, they would make us, like, create, like, these solar eclipse, like, little out of cereal boxes and tubes, like toilet paper tubes or napkin tubes. And you would be able to see like the shadow of the sun and how it kind of goes away. But if you are going to partake in the solar eclipse to watch it, do not watch it from your camera lens. Do not stare directly at the sun. Do not use binoculars because you will definitely burn your retinas. Don't do that. <laughs> you could go blind or damage your, your eyesight. So you definitely want to get a pair of solar eclipse glasses um, um, and you definitely can order that online. Actually, like I said, my grocery store would, sold them. That's another thing I picked up from the store today. So there's that. I'm going to check on this. Yeah. So it's getting there. Going to let that do its thing. Going to turn it up. When you're working with an electric skillet, you kind of have to like turn it up, turn it down because it really gets hot, um, especially when it's closest to like the source of where the, the electricity, the heat's coming from. 
So, oh, I also want to mention I'm going to be using mayo, ketchup, and mustard. Now, someone asked, I think in the last video, what's the difference? Um, what's the difference uh, from LA style street hot dogs to Mexican style hot dogs? Mexican style hot dogs, uh, and a lot of people call them Sonoran style. You can add like pico de gallo, you could add avocado. Honestly, you can add whatever you want to any type of hot dog. Let's be honest there. But Sonoran style does have the option of putting like pinto beans and they use this bread. It's not your typical hot dog bun. Sonoran style, like this is a regular hot dog bun, but the Sonoran style I have seen where the buns are a lot bigger and sometimes they put two hot dogs in it and they top it like they load it up. But with like the LA style street dogs, um, just the, the peppers, onion, uh, maybe a jalapeno, uh, Anaheim peppers sometimes, um, the bacon wrapped hot dog, the hot dog bun, and you got like the trinity of like condiments that go on top. And I have seen where people use like hot Cheeto dust. Like they top, they, they add a garnish of hot Cheeto dust. That is also an option, but I would say that's like the biggest difference. Uh, these are very simple to make. Um, so yeah, this is definitely, I mean, again, shout out to my people that cook for one or two people. Like you can't, some people just don't cook large family meals. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to cook from the tabletop in my electric skillet. So let's see here. Okay. So H-O-P-E, hope, uh, put in the chat, I heard someone say that she noticed the birds went quiet during a total eclipse. Um, you know, I think, I, I mean, I would, that would make sense. Uh, animals are definitely uh, really sensitive to, uh, you know, whether it's a natural disaster, weather, weather related stuff, uh, nature. So if, you know, you feel warm and the sun goes away, I, I would think they'd kind of be like, huh? Um, especially animals that, you know, kind of have a, like, what is it called? The, your, um, Acadian rhythm, like when it's light outside, you wake up when it's dark, you know, you go to bed. So I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, there are a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding the solar eclipse. I saw briefly like a quick video and it said that the path of totality is going to cross over a certain fault line. So people are like wondering if that's going to cause earthquakes or just some sort of like natural disaster. I hope not, but that was one theory. Um, but since we're on the subject, I wrote some things down because I really wanted to share this with you. Okay, I'm going to get a drink, by the way. By the way, shout out to my family members that are watching. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Whoops, why? <laughs> okay, so I already went over like what not to do during a, a solar eclipse, but there are superstitions and myths. Okay, so some people used to believe, clearly we don't believe, well, I, I don't believe it, but um, there was a superstition that said uh, solar rays would poison food. They would cause like food to spoil. If you prepared food during a solar eclipse, like you weren't supposed to do that, but that has been disproven. Um, but you know, I, I don't, again, some people might still believe that. I don't know. Uh, another superstition is um, like a historical aspect of like the myth or superstition surrounding eclipses. Um, they have been seen as a disruption of natural order and many believe it to be a bad omen. Um, so I don't know. What do you think? Comment in the chat. Maybe maybe some of you are, you know, more in tune to, oops, more in tune to things like this. Um, now, from a spiritual aspect, uh, eclipses are often seen as times to let go of old patterns, uh, beliefs, or aspects of life that no longer serve one's highest good. I mean, that could have some truth into it if you're, like, spiritual. And in Navajo culture... An eclipse is a sacred time to reflect. I could totally see that making sense. So uh, there's that. So yeah, but I'm definitely excited. 
Um, I'm definitely excited for that. It's always a, a good uh, learning moment for my, my kids, you know, to kind of like talk about it. And uh, it's a teachable moment. I mean, solar eclipses are pretty cool, you know. Okay, so I'm going to crank this up. Let's put this here. Don't burn. Oh, the jalapeno smells good. Look. This is a torreado, jalapeño torreado. I hope I'm saying it right. So I'm going to turn this. Okay, so we're gonna let that go. Now, I'm gonna add all my peppers and onion. Ah. Now we're gonna saute. Smells good already. So have any of you already had dinner or are while you're watching the live stream or do you have snacks or drinks? I'm always curious to see what people eat. So I'm thinking the next live stream, I'm going to show you how to make, um, Fideo loco, or maybe conchitas. I don't know. Let's do a poll. Would you prefer to see me to do like conchitas with carne or fideo loco? Um, I definitely, uh, I think that would be also uh, something good to make for those of you that cook out of like an electric skillet and you could have dinner and the rest could be lunch the next day. Claudia Villanueva, fideo please. Okay. Becca 23, bologna sandwich piled high with lettuce and tomato. Uh, that's good. Nelly Benavides, tacos for dinner. Nice. Carne, I see carne, carne. Fideo please. So I see a lot of fideo. I do see conchitas. So um, I'll see. I'll do the playback and just kind of get uh, an idea. And we definitely can do some type of sopita. This is really like, oh my gosh. Ah! See how I have to kind of turn it down? But it's starting to look great. And it smells great. I have not had dinner, so this is going to be a treat. Everybody made dinner, uh, everybody ate dinner today, except for me, because I was, I was too busy in the grocery store being accosted by an elderly person that mistaked me for someone and told me I have a lot of teeth in my, my face. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, Violeta, do you have a recipe for gorditas de maíz? I actually, I think I've done that before. If not, I should probably do that. I'll put that on my to-do list. But I, mm, I've done, I think I've done gorditas, but the flour, the harina, I think. Or did I do, no? I don't know. Uh, I can't remember. I have over a thousand videos on my channel and sometimes I forget. Oh my gosh, who's elderly now? Me, because I can't remember. <laughs> Thank you, ER. I have a beautiful smile. Thank you. Okay, so Megan Alejos, you need to tell us that grocery story. Okay, so for those of you just now joining the chat, earlier in the live stream, I guess I'll repeat it. Why not? Um, we're still cooking here. It's just us. Um, so I went to the grocery store because I forgot hot dog buns for the live today. And I was walking in the store. It's literally like within the first three minutes I walked into the store. An elderly gentle, gentleman, between like the age of like 70 to 80, just kind of like stopped me in my tracks and was like, hello. And I was like, hello there, sir. And he goes, well, how are you doing today? And I'm like, I'm doing well. And you? 
I guess I was just trying to be friendly because I really didn't know this person. But in the back of my head, I thought, okay, maybe he knows me from, you know, social media. I don't know. And I was just being polite because I would hate to meet one of you in real life and be like, oh, who are you? I don't know you. Because then, you know, I know people, they'll go online and be like, I met, you know, Simply Mama Cooks today and she was a... So anyways, I was just being nice, but I'm nice any anyway. So this gentleman stopped me, said, hello, and how are you? And I'm like, I just started, you know, going right back saying, I'm fine. And you? And then he kind of like stopped and he realized that I guess I wasn't the person he thought he was talking to. He realized like, oh, this isn't her. So he's like, you're not Cheryl. And I'm like, no, sir, I'm not. And he goes, now that I think about it, uh, Cheryl had more gray hair and you've got a lot of teeth. And you smile too much. He was kind of like, you smile too much or you smile a lot. And I'm like, okay. And I was like, well, okay, well, you have a good day. And then he like stopped me again. He's like, I just want to say, you know, you can't be really nice to strangers these days. There's a lot of weird people. So when he said that, I just thought, how ironic is that, sir? By the way, at this point, mentally, I'm calling him grandpa. Um, and I'm thinking like, did someone forget grandpa at the grocery store like this, you know, and I'm thinking, sir, you have proven you've enlightened me in real time with this interaction. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he called me he said I was too nice. I smiled too much and I have a lot of teeth. Okay. Ooh, John Stump, pork butt in the crock pot. It's been cooking all day. I bet that's going to be good. Oh, Lisa Chapman, fideo loco, please. I think Fideo for the win, right? I think I will do Fideo. Um, <clears throat> okay, would you be able to post an ingredient list? I certainly will. Actually, um, for Fideo Local, I have, I've done a video for that. Um, but what I'm going to do for the live stream cooking, I'm going to half the recipe. Uh, I'm going to half the recipe because I feel like you know, I really want to stick to cooking, um, cooking kind of like small portions for people who are just cooking for themselves. But if you want a full like video local like quantity, if you look simp look up simply mama cooks video local, my recipe video should pop up. Uh, but I definitely will post the day of saying, hey, I'm gonna go live uh, 8 p.m. tonight, and if you want to cook along. I will put like the measurements and ingredients of what I'm going to use. So for sure, I'll do that. I know that was a long winded response. <laughs> okay. So look at this. Does this not look amazing? Wow. It smells amazing and the peppers and onions. So I'm actually just going to let the residual heat kind of cook that other side, but this bacon is pretty much where it needs to be. <laughs> Star Trooper, yeah. The oil is actually, yeah, it's popping. This is me right now. Oh. We'll do this. Yeah, and hopefully if you are cooking, <laughs> If you do decide to cook in a, this in an electric skillet, you know, be in a place where it's not so confined. Yeah. Okay, so we are almost there. I can't wait to show you what this looks like. And quite honestly, if I if I were not live streaming, this probably would be done already. <laughs> So are there any, oh, EQV, salud, thank you so much. Thank you for your gift. That is awesome. Let me see if I can give that a heart. I don't want to burn myself. Eee. Did I do it? <laughs> um, let's see here. Okay, so it ha it's kind of stopped uh, sizzling. I kind of want the bacon on one more side to cook, and then I'm going to put this together. But pretty much the bacon is where I need it to be. Okay, so let's see if I can go to the, oh, 
My family and friends love my albondigas soup. That is awesome. I've only, let me see what the rest. Oh, Trish Pacheco. I appreciate that. Maria Hernandez. I think sometimes older people are just lonely and want to talk. That definitely um, could be, which is another reason why, you know, whether they're elderly or not, you should be kind to people. It literally, you know, there's no reason to just be rude to people. Look, and I actually prefer to avoid um, interactions like that because I just, I'm a homebody. So if I can avoid people altogether, like, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> but, um, but I do believe that you would be surprised how just a short interaction with someone can totally make your day or ruin your day. Um, and I know I'm being very like facetious that he called me a toothy person. Um, quite honestly, over the years, I have grown a thick skin to a lot of stuff. Um, now, had he told me that maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I would probably be like, oh my God, you know, but I just thought, sir, you have a good day. Thank you. I will mind my teeth. But I, I just absolutely think it's, free to be kind, you know, and I really didn't need to, to have a negative interaction with anyone today or tomorrow for that matter. Just, you know, even if somebody were, were to come up to me like a stranger and they were like super mad or just super angry, you know, and I just feel like people now, and I'll say always, I can't just say now, I just feel that sometimes people are so unpredictable and so impulsive with lashing out even to complete strangers because maybe they're just having a go at life. Things aren't going their way. So I definitely don't want to be like in the crosshairs of someone that's ready to just, you know, you just never know with some people what, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. You just don't know what that is for people. Some people tolerate things. And some people just don't. And you never know. You just never know. We see it all the time on social media. We see all the time um, how you look at a video where there's like, especially I live in the greater Houston area, road rage is a huge problem. It, and I'm sure you could say that in the city you live in or whatever, but every day there's like somebody just so angry. Look, I get it. Houston traffic is no joke. But there's no reason to harm someone because you're just frustrated you know especially if you already you know like I had to commute one way to work from where I lived because I moved outside of like Houston city limits it was like an hour in traffic and I just planned my day accordingly I said Angelica you're not going to get around this traffic so pack a snack a coffee it was my work commute um have a nice playlist and just in some weird way, I would actually enjoy the traffic. I would literally enjoy sitting in traffic because I already expected it and it was my mindset. So some people need to do that. Plan accordingly. Okay, hot dog buns. You can toast these. I'm not, they're soft. So we're gonna put this together. Look at this. So that's going in just like that. You know, oh, this is in my face, sorry. So I'm thinking, I didn't bring another plate. <laughs> Typical me. Um, Chaik, okay, maybe my husband will bring me a plate. Chaik, if you're watching the live, which I hope you are, because you're supposed to be moderating stuff. <laughs> Chaik, can you bring me a plate from the kitchen, a small plate, please? I love you. <laughs> Let's hope my husband <laughs> to bring me a plate because I know the minute that I put the peppers and stuff and then I start doing this it's going to be super messy sorry everyone welcome to cooking uh with Angelica super unprepared um yeah third live stream and again always something <laughs> you're here you want to say hi everybody wants to see you say hi <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay. Got a plate. Thanks, honey. Okay.
So, I got a plate now. It's kind of wet. I think he just washed it or something. I don't know. Or from the dish strainer. Okay. Yes, Sherry. <laughs> uh, my husband definitely will eat whatever I make because he loves me. Thank you, Hope. Thank you for your gift. Thank you so much. Okay, so. Hot dog. We're going to put the other one on here as well. Um... I'm missing a hot dog bun. Where did it go? <laughs> did it fall? Thank God there was a footstool there. Found it. Okay. Oh, geez. Look, I'm not a pro live stream person. <laughs> so, so if you're looking for subpar live streaming and hijinks, welcome. Welcome to... Cooking in an electric skillet tabletop live cooking show with Angelica. Okay, so now, actually, I think with these, let's put the let's put the uh, condiments. Come on, come on. Okay, so we're gonna go with mustard, and I'm probably gonna make a mess. Ooh, that looks cool. And then we'll go with some mayo. No, you're going to work. Catch up. Don't do this to me. No. You must work. Oh, my God. If this flies everywhere, do you realize how ridiculous I'm going to look? Come on. Er, okay. The ketchup <laughs> does not want to work. Okay. Give me a second to work this out because I know if I do this on camera, it's going to be a huge mess. I promise I'm going to show you this hot dog. It's so good. Okay. Why are you not coming out? Okay, let's see how this works. Doesn't the ketchup doesn't want to okay, sort of, sort of. Okay. I don't know why the ketchup does not want to cooperate at all. Like what's going on with you, ketchup? I'm sorry. Technical difficulties? Gosh. Nah, it doesn't want to work. It does not want to work. If I had a toothpick, let me see. <laughs> Thank you, honey. <laughs> he brought me scissors. Jeanette Waverly, Waverly, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this and it's gonna make a mess. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't, I, they can hear you, so I don't know what they said. Okay, thank you, honey. Okay, so ketchup's back in business. Okay. Hubby to the rescue. Here we go. So now, we're going to top this with the peppers, just like that. Oh, that's hot. And that's the, um, that's the, uh, L.A. style street dog, everyone. That's it. Super good. So, I've got my hands messy. And I know a lot of you don't like eating shows. <clears throat> yes, Rocket Knight, he sure did, because he's watching. He's like, oh my gosh. Um, okay. Okay. So I'm going to take a bite. I'm excited. I haven't had dinner. This is going to be good. I'm going to set this one over here and we'll, we'll hook that one up in a minute. But 
This is the hot dog. Okay, going in for a bite. Why am I eating a hot dog live stream? This is going to be bad because I am so messy. If only I had a fork. Anyway, cheers. For those of you that are eating, cheers. Mmm. Mmm. That was good. That is a really good bite. Really, really good bite. I'm glad I saved. <clears throat> Okay, let's do another one. Uh, I'm not gonna eat it, but for those of you that might not have seen the one I just did. By the way, for those of you that kind of joined late, I, ooh, LA style street dogs. Agua Fresca de Jamaica. This is a Mexican style a uh, fresh water drink with hibiscus flowers. I boiled a cinnamon stick in water and then I steeped the dried hibiscus flowers, add sugar to taste over ice. You'll want to make this all summer long. I actually like drinking this for those of you that have like low iron. Um, it has some health benefits, but even if you're thirsty and want something refreshing, cheers. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, another hot dog. We're going to go with the ketchup first because it gave me a hard time. Ketchup. Mayo. Okay, there we go. And then, and there you have it. A delicious, ah, a delicious LA street style hot dog. Very simple and jalapeno. So I'm going to put this one on the plate. Well, actually, I'll just leave this here. We'll do it like that. I feel like it needs like more of this. There we go. I'll make this one for my, my husband. I'll keep that one for him. There we go. Check that out. And then I'm going to take a bite of the jalapeno. Wish me luck because sometimes these are super spicy and I just don't know what to expect. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm, it's spicy. It's spicy. Mmm. It's really good. <clears throat> the jalapeno is spicy. Yes, uh, Gen 1 Pill 1 Pilcher, it is mayo. Um, Becky R, good idea. The hibiscus tea bags. Oh, um, Zenya Carolina, I'm sorry. I wish I could give you this hot dog. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'm drinking Agua Fresca de Jamaica, LA style street dogs. This is my dinner. Um, I might not eat all of this on camera, but that jalapeno, sometimes I like them when they're milder. I know I'm, um, 
weak sauce when it comes to spice. The older I get, I just, I can't tolerate, tolerate super spicy stuff anymore. Um, uh, uh, let's see, Aaron, Aaron A. Leal, um, get a big red. Yeah, right. Um, let's see, Bishop Kitty, do you make a picture of Halika at a time? If I'm serving like a lot, uh, today was enough for like this jar and a, a glass. My husband drank that, but you can. Oh my goodness. So thank you everybody for joining me live. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, like I said earlier, if you are going to, um, it's okay. Let's see, Loralee Forge, there'll be another one Tuesday. So let's wrap this up next Tuesday, 8 p.m. It seems like the consensus says that they want a fideo. So I'm going to show you how to make fideo loco. It is a fully loaded like sopita de fideo. It's perfect um, to feed a crowd. It's very budget friendly if you want to feed a lot of people. But we're cooking right here on the tabletop in the elect electric skillet. For those of you that just don't need to cook um, a lot. You just need to cook a meal for yourself, maybe lunch the next day. Like for example, if I were single, I would completely eat this. You can throw in another hot dog and have two of these for lunch the next day. So I appreciate everyone. I appreciate everyone's gifts. For those of you, shout out to all of you that donated a gift in the live chat. That means so much to me. As a matter of fact, I didn't even really understand, like, I, I know there's people who are, like, pros at live cooking and live streaming, but it really means a lot to me that you take the time to join the live chat to just, I don't know, cook and hang with me. This is such a great way. It, we have right now 333 people in the live chat. That is a lot. If there were 333 people in my house right now, there wouldn't be room. So that means a lot to me. So I'm going to save this for my husband. He's probably like, can you stop talking so I can have the hot dog? <laughs> um, but yeah, dinner, LA style street, hot dogs. I hope you watch the, uh, the replay, watch the replay of the live chat. Uh, if you want to know how I made this, watch it. I appreciate your time. And if you are going to partake in these solar eclipse, don't burn your eyeballs. Be safe. And I will see you in the next live stream. Okay. Bye, everyone.